chemical equilibrium and the Haber process. The point here is to try and use some of our knowledge about equilibrium to see why the Haber process uses the conditions that it does. Now you might remember that the Haber process involves nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas reacting to form ammonia gas. There. And it also turns out that the Haber process is exothermic. So let's work out what can be done to encourage the formation of ammonia. Now this is an industrial process. Time is money and all that, and therefore we're trying to make as much ammonia as we can in the time available. We want to encourage a forward reaction. Now there are four things we could possibly change. Concentration, temperature, pressure, and a catalyst. Let's take temperature for example. Now we'll look at this. The forward reaction is exothermic, which means the forward reaction produces heat. So this begs the question, what can we do in terms of temperature to encourage a forward reaction? How can we persuade the forward reaction to go? How can we persuade the reaction to produce heat? And the answer is, cool it down. Because if we cool it down, if we lower the temperature, the system will try to counteract that. The system will try to not have the temperature lowered. The system wants to maintain the temperature as it was. So, if we were to lower the temperature, this reaction would shift to the right to create heat. Because by creating heat, it's going to try to cancel out this cooling effect. And that would therefore make you think that the Haber process would be carried out at a low temperature. Well, yes in theory, but no in practice. Because the problem with low temperatures is that the reaction is obviously slow. So we have to find a compromise here. On paper, a low temperature would be good. But the downside is, it's a slow reaction. On paper, a high temperature is bad. And that's because a high temperature would encourage the reverse reaction. However, the advantage of a high temperature is it's fast. We have to find a compromise somewhere in between. And that's why a temperature, not nearly as low as you think, is chosen. A temperature of about 500 degrees is the temperature which is chosen very often for the Haber process. Doesn't seem particularly low. But temperatures below that involve such a slow reaction that it takes far too long to form the ammonia. What else can we do that might influence the formation of ammonia? Well, another variable at our disposal is concentration. Now, how can we encourage the forward reaction? You might recall one way of doing that would be to upset the balance by having large quantities on this side. If we have large amounts of nitrogen and large amounts of hydrogen, the system will be encouraged to use those up. We've upset the balance. One way to use up this imbalance is to shift to the right. So you can be sure that in the other process, the concentrations of nitrogen and hydrogen are kept high. And keeping these high, we're encouraging the forward reaction. What else can we do in terms of concentration to encourage the formation of ammonia? The answer is, remove the ammonia. If we can remove the ammonia as it's formed, the system will try to replace that lost ammonia. And this is what's done in practice. So once again, in practice, the ammonia is removed as it's formed, the reactant's concentration is kept high, and put together, that encourages the forward reaction. For this reason, equilibrium is never actually achieved. In order to reach equilibrium, you have to leave this alone, leave it to effectively settle down and find its own level. But if you're constantly tinkering with it, that will not happen. What else can we do? You've said we could change the temperature, we can change the concentration. What else can be done to encourage the formation of ammonia? How about the effect of pressure? Now, will this work? Well, we have nitrogen gas and we have hydrogen gas and ammonia gas. So, yes, there are gases. Is it a different volume? Let's find out. We have 
four volumes of gas on the left, but only two volumes of gas on the right. So this meets both conditions. There has to be at least one gas, and there's a difference in volume. How can we encourage the reaction to shift to the right? How can we encourage a decrease in volume? And the answer is simply increase the pressure. If we increase the pressure using a high pressure, that will encourage the gases to take up a smaller volume. And therefore, the Haber process is carried out at high pressures. It's carried out at very high pressures. Pressures something like 250 atmospheres. It's hard to visualise how high a pressure that is. But that equates to something like one and a half tonnes per square inch. That's a little bit old fashioned, but there's a square inch. You can imagine one and a half tonnes pushing down on that surface. It's a very high pressure. Mind you, why don't use even higher pressure? Because the higher the pressure, the more successful this will be. The answer is, wood raising, wood raising is with even higher pressure pay for itself. We'd say 500 atmospheres make a difference. Well, yes, an even higher pressure would produce even more ammonia. But at what cost? It's much more dangerous. It's probably much more expensive to build the equipment required to hold these pressures. And would the extra ammonia pay for itself? Possibly not. So once again, a compromise. We have to draw a line somewhere, and that's why a pressure of 250 atmospheres is where the line is drawn. And lastly, what about a catalyst? Now, you might recall that the catalyst for the Haber process, which you learned about at standard grade, is iron. It won't be great big lumps of iron. We want it to have a large surface, because the larger the surface, the more contact there is and the more efficient it will be. However, this is the odd one out. The catalyst is the only factor which does not affect the equilibrium. Even when iron is added, it does not shift the balance. What happens is, adding a catalyst speeds up the forward reaction. It goes much faster. But it also speeds up the reverse reaction. We're kind of going around in circles. It really peps up the reaction, makes it go quicker, but it doesn't give us any more ammonia. What it does do is it produces ammonia in a shorter time. It's more efficient, effectively. So to summarize, the Haber process makes use of changing concentration. It makes use of a high pressure. It makes use of, well, theoretically, a low temperature. But remember, that might be too slow, so you have to be careful. And it also makes use of a catalyst. But the catalyst does not encourage the forward reaction. It's the odd one out.